Hey YouTubers, I uh, wanted to go through a really quick review here of the 2018 MacBook Pro Retina quad core uh, computer. Uh, went through a really weird selection process here the last few weeks, have some feedback on what's good, what's bad, and uh, there are a lot of reviews out there that provide a bunch of information, you know, uh, bench, geek bench scores and processor speeds and all stuff. I wanted to do a real life, this is how it works from day to day, uh, comparison to some of the other models I've tried, some of the older models I've had, and uh, just give you a little feedback about what I think of the new computer. So I started this process with a 2013 13.3 inch MacBook Pro Retina. Um, I had that computer about six years. It served me very, very well. Uh, but recently I started doing a business where I'm doing more video editing and it simply couldn't keep up with the video editing. It was too slow, it got really hot. So I started down the road of finding a replacement. And at one point I thought I would do two computers. Maybe I could keep that guy and get like an iMac and do most of the video editing there. It didn't work that great going back and forth, uh, trying to you know get the files back and forth and uh, do all that stuff. So I thought, well, let's try a 2015 uh, MacBook Pro Retina 15 inch. Uh, I got one with the 2.8 gigahertz processor, the i7. It had the uh, Radeon graphics card in it, the discrete graphics card, a really beefy computer for that time. It was one of those that and when you read all the reviews, they say, boy, this is the last great MacBook because it has all the ports that everybody wants, um, but uh, seems to be you know, the thing to get. And the new ones, they don't like the keyboards and the touch bars of gimmick and all this other stuff. So I thought, okay, I'll do that. Uh, and it was a great computer, very fast, uh, did run a little hot. The fans were running constantly, it was very loud. Um, I didn't love the 15 inch size. I actually was hoping to keep a 13 or 14 inch computer. Uh, I do like a little smaller form factor using an external monitor. This works great for the video editing, but then if I need to take it with me and travel, I can still do some of the stuff I need to do. So at that point, I was reading about the Huawei MateBook X Pro, which got rave reviews and they said, oh, it's a lot like the MacBook. They build it really nicely. It's got a discrete graphics card in it. Um, the 14 inch display was just the right size. It was a beautiful display. Um, very nice computer. I did not like Windows 10 uh, just for my use, and, and I'm an Android guy, like when it comes to phones, I actually like the customization and all that stuff. I just didn't like Windows 10. Uh, Mac OS is pretty seamless. It's very professional looking. Everything works kind of the way it's supposed to. And uh, when I got the Huawei and set it up, I think it took about three hours to update software and update drivers and run through all this crap. And it still ran hot when video editing. It was still quite a bit slower than the 2015. And so at that point, I saw a really good deal uh, just after Christmas. B&H Photo was running this 2018 uh, MacBook Pro with the 2.4 gigahertz uh, i5 quad core processor. This is the first uh, MacBook Pro 13 inch that has had a quad core processor. And they had this for $1699, which was uh, 300 bucks cheaper than you could get it in the Apple store. So I thought I'm gonna take a chance on this guy and see if I can get the smaller form factor uh, with some of the video performance or video editing performance of the 2015. And so I went that route. Now I did choose the 2.3 gigahertz i5 processor because I had read some things about the i7s running a little hotter and thermal throttling and people were saying that the 2.3 i5 was plenty fast and I can attest after using this one, A, it doesn't run very hot and B, everything I've thrown at it, it has handled wonderfully. So I do believe that the i5 processor is plenty fast. If I was going to buy it again, I would stick with that. Um, I did want a 512 uh, SSD drive, and so I went with that uh, hard drive as well. And uh, so far, the machine has been really, really good. Now, one of the areas where the newer MacBook Pros receive a lot of grief is the lack of traditional ports. Uh, no HDMI out, no traditional USB port, uh, no SD card reader, etc. Um, I honestly haven't found that to be a big issue. Um, I purchased this little guy right here, which is a 
USB to USB-C adapter. It's made by Nanda. Um, it's $9 on Amazon and it has worked great. Anything I need to plug in, my GoPro camera, my uh, flash drive, all have worked really well through that device. I also purchased this one, which got some great reviews from a few of the other people here on YouTube. This is the Chargen USB-C hub. Um, it has two USB-C ports, two USB ports, uh, and a bigger SD card reader and a micro SD card reader. It does not have an HDMI out. However, uh, because I'm using this Dell monitor and connecting it through the Thunderbolt port here, the USB-C, I don't need uh, the HDMI out and this single cable does everything that I need. In fact, it also charges the uh, laptop as well. So everything's going through one, uh, one cable and the laptop stays charged while it's on there. Now, the other thing I did pick up was the magnetic USB-C uh, cable. The lack of the MagSafe um, magnetic connector, magnetic power cable on the older uh, MacBooks is a big problem, and I, I think that's a design flaw that they should have, or a, a feature that they should have kept. But uh, this little guy here, which works pretty well, I'd give it a seven out of 10 rating probably. I think the magnet could be a little stronger and uh, I wish it was reversible so you could plug it in from either direction. But you just need this little tiny adapter here that goes in one of your ports. And uh, that way if I trip on the cord or something and uh, yank that thing, it pops off the computer and I don't yank the computer off of the desk or off the couch or something. And one of the things I like the most about this setup is how simple the cloning is. Uh, if I go to system preferences here, displays, this is one of the things about macOS that just works really nicely. So this little spot on the bottom shows my setup. I can move this around. If I had these side by side, I just scoot this guy over here. And then when I open a new window, that thinks that the big monitor is off to the right. So if I move this to the right, it'll come in from the left up top. Um, and if I want to just scoot that back the way it was, I simply move this guy back down to the bottom, center it and let go. And now it knows that the big monitor is up top. And that way windows will move up and down back and forth between the two displays. It's very, very simple, very clean works really uh, nicely. Another feature on the new MacBooks that gets mixed reviews is the touch bar. Um, I honestly thought it was gonna be kind of a gimmicky thing that I would not use. Most of the reviews say there's not really much good use for it yet. Um, I mean, you know, people use it for emojis and things like that, or, or maybe playback of video and stuff. But overall, the, the, the reviews have been probably more negative than positive. I actually really like the touch bar. It has uh, been a very good thing on the computer so far. So when you go into system preferences and you go to your keyboard, I set it up so that the touch bar shows expanded control strip much like the old MacBook that I had, except there were a few buttons on there that I never used. One of them was the, uh, the lighting of the keypad and how bright or dark the the keypad was, which I never changed once. So you can customize this. Now there were a couple things and features that I always found funny on the old MacBooks, one of which was trying to take a screen capture. You had to do, uh, you know, sh command, shift command four or something like that to get the thing on. Well here, you can just take this little screenshot icon and drag it down and you can put it in your touch bar where you want to have it. And then you can also do one, I use one uh, show desktop. So if you have a few different windows open and you just want to get back to the main desktop, you can bring that guy down in. And so you can customize it to where the touch bar looks a lot like the old touch bar. Some people were saying, oh, you have to have, uh, you have to hit more than one button now to, you know, put the brightness up or down. Well, no, you don't. You just, you put the, put the uh, buttons the way the old one was and, uh, Add a few things if you want and customize it. You can put Siri in there. You can uh, customize it the way you want and I actually think it works really nicely. It's a little more functional now than the old touch bar on my 2013. 
Another thing I actually really like about this new MacBook Pro are the speakers. They are much more full sounding and louder than the speakers on my 2013 or on the 2015 I tried and actually they're louder than the uh, Huawei that I had. Uh, here's a quick little sample just so you can hear a little YouTube clip and uh, an ad so you can see what they do. My colleagues found monday.com. You can see the task owner, what the deadline is, change the status, and it's all in one place. Inside each task, you can make comments, attach files. I wanted to see how it performed at the at the other course, and I got my fastest lap out of all those bikes that I tested on this bike. So you can see it's actually quite loud. It fills the room up really nicely, and uh, I think the speakers do a great job. So one of the other things on here is Siri. I wasn't sure how I'd like it, but uh, I don't use it very often, but it is fairly convenient. You can... Uh, ask it you know scores or uh, weather things like that very quickly i did notice i had to turn the volume on my microphone up or the sensitivity on my microphone up just a little bit to get it to work but it's fairly quick and fairly painless you'll see here what time are the nfl football games this weekend the colts take on the chiefs in the afc divisional playoff on saturday at 2:35 p.m so you get your information pretty quickly if there's little things uh, you want to ask it. I, I don't do a whole lot with Siri, but it's worked well and uh, is fairly convenient. One thing I didn't mention earlier is the uh, Touch ID. I love the Touch ID. It is so fast um, and it's so much better than having to type in a password every time. It is one of my favorite quick access uh, features of this computer. So a couple uh, notes on the speed of the computer and just for my personal use, how it's been. Uh, again, as I've started to do more video editing, I use either DaVinci Resolve or Final Cut Pro. Now, what I found with this computer is that using DaVinci Resolve, um, I actually set up a nice little test between the 2015 MacBook Pro uh, with the Radeon graphics card and this new 2018 13 inch. The, I made about a seven minute video. Uh, it was 1080p at 60 frames a second. I put color correction in there. I put a couple titles on each of the clips. There are two titles that had to run through, which in DaVinci Resolve especially uh, takes up a lot of resources and runs pretty slow. Uh, when I exported or rendered those videos, the 2015 started out like a ball fire. It was uh, rendering around 120 frames a second for the first uh, three or four minutes. A few minutes in, it got very hot. Fans started to run really loud and the uh, frame rate dropped and dropped and dropped. And by the time it was done rendering, it was down around 15 or 20 frames a second. So the whole rendering of the video took uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of 6 minutes and 50 seconds or something. It was still pretty fast overall. The 2018 MacBook Pro uh, rendered the entire video in a little over 7 minutes, I think maybe 740, so slightly slower, but it was a very constant 55 to 60 frames a second all the way through the video. It never got that hot. The fans kicked on and ran a little bit, not nearly as loud, not nearly as much heat in the machine, and uh, just seemed like the, uh, the, the resources within the computer are utilized better um, and uh, the, the rendering process was smooth, it was more consistent and still almost as fast as the 2015 which was way better than the Huawei I tried and uh, I was really happy with it. Then I ran the same video clips through Final Cut Pro and everybody says that these new MacBooks are optimized for Final Cut Pro. Well, that same seven minute clip uh, running through Final Cut Pro went through in about three minutes on this machine. So it flies doing that type of work in Final Cut Pro. And that was easily enough for me to be very happy with my choice. Uh, I, you know, there are other concerns with the machine, the keyboard, okay, it has some issues. I have not had any problems with the keyboard whatsoever. I hear they've extended the warranty on those in case something does go wrong. Um, the newer 2018s apparently have you know they've tried to fix that a little bit 
I don't love the keyboard. It's not quite as good as the older MacBooks, but haven't had any problems there whatsoever. And uh, to be perfectly honest, the machine has been great, and I'm so far really, really happy with it.